my face for most of this episode. Literally in my notes, I just have this. That's, that was my first two points, my notes. Hi everyone and welcome back to The Upside Dan. Here is a new episode of Deep Dive Into The Upside. Not with The Upside, Into The Upside. And we are covering yet another WandaVision episode. We just got episode four on Disney Plus and oh my God. Before I get started, there are time codes in the comments and also in the description of this video so you can skip to certain scenes that you wanna see my thoughts on or a recap of. As always with my deep dives, and of course you can check out my deep dives, I will link the playlist in the description. The end of this video, you know, in throughout the video up there. And of course you can just go to my, you know, YouTube profile and you can find them there. I love talking about it. So let's get into this episode. This episode starts out straight fire and does not let up. As of right now filming this, the IMDb description you know, the plot synopsis, it just says everything is about to change. And that cannot be more true after watching this episode. So we start off with Monica with some great effects. Monica is starting to, you know, come back together. You know, we find out this is just at the blip. Um, so the blip happened. So five years later, everyone's back, you know, after, of course, the events from Endgame. And Monica is starting to reform in a hospital room. And I'm just like, wowed by this. I loved this opening. And of course, Tiana Paris does an amazing job here. Spectacular. Especially in the scene, but in this, the whole show, you know, she's really great here. So she appears back in a hospital room. We don't know why she's in a hospital room. I had my theory and unfortunately that did come to fruition, but I'll get that to that in a minute. So she, you know, she runs out of the room, obviously, and everyone's in a, and you know, a panic because everyone, well, not everyone, but the people that flipped are now reappearing and the hospital is, you know, over, um, it's, it's really early. It's overbooked. I, I can't think of the actual word. Um, the hospital's overbooked and Monica's obviously just ram running around, you know, trying to ask anybody, anybody, you know, for an answer where her mom is. So she gets to who I think is her doctor and the doctor tells her that her mom has died. That was actually a real gun punch for me. I was like, oh, I, I really liked Maria in Captain Marvel. Overall, I'm not a huge fan of the movie Captain Marvel. I, I like it enough. I think it's okay enough. But, you know, with what we were expecting from the MCU at the time, I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. But anyway, Maria was a major part of what I liked about that movie. So it, even though we only see her in one movie, it's a, it's a gut punch. You know, she died. I was like, aww. And, um, of course, obviously, Monica is taken aback by this. Of course, they just came back, appeared after five years of being gone. And to them, it was 20 minutes or whatever. And, um... So obviously this is a real gut punch to her as it is the audience. Monica goes to the S.W.O.R.D. headquarters. S.W.O.R.D. stands for Sentient Weapon Observation Response Division. She has a meeting with the director there, Tyler Hayward. And at first she can't get in, but she, um, he comes and she ends up getting in. And, you know, he addresses the elephant in the room, how he's the director now. And she's like, of course. And he mentions that this is this S.W.O.R.D. was brought up from the ground up by... Monica's mom, Maria. I thought it was very sweet. And also when Monica's walking, you know, in with Tyler Hayward at the first, there's a, there's a really very quick scene, but sh a quick shot, I should say. She's looking in, and there's a picture. She glances at the picture of her mom on the wall, which I thought was very, you know, adorable. <laughs> and, you know, heartfelt actually, even though it was very quick. There's a line here I want to point out. Um, she's talking to Tyler and she says, um, well, the, you know, they're talking about the universe, like space and how there's th all these threats out there now. And she was like, there was always threats. There's always, you know, allies and enemies. So allies, I, I just thought that was a cute nod. I'm, I'm assuming obviously to Captain Marvel because she's an ally out in the universe. I thought that was a very good line. So Monica is grounded, um, for now. 
she can only you know deal with terrestrial cases not anything in space so she, i believe it's i mean it's mentioned she's been to space before this but um she can't go any to anything in space so she's assigned to the case that um we will find out that this show is revolved around right uh, to them it's just a missing persons case she travels to the border of westview new jersey and westview is the name of the town that wanda has created for herself and we are greeted by Jimmy Woo. Jimmy Woo makes his reappearance into the MCU. He was in Ant Man and the Wasp, and now he's back as the FBI agent. And he's explaining kind of what's going on, and they find out that Westview doesn't exist. They they know it, but Westview never existed. That person that was missing, they don't. No one around there knows who that person is, and they never heard of him. I guess Westview was seen as a witness protection program. Woo says. This is the scene we get the answer about the helicopter drone that we see in episode two that was in color when everything else was in black and white. We see that, you know, Monica and Jimmy, they, they send it through the force field and it disappears when it goes through the force field. They're like, oh, where to go, where to go? So Monica goes up to the force field. She's kind of touching it, touching it. And then she gets pulled in. So it just disappears. So she gets pulled in and then to Jimmy and everyone, she just disappears. Then we get our reintroduction to Darcy. Kat Dennings in the MCU. We've seen her in the Thor two first two Thor films, and now she's back in the MCU. I know some people found her annoying. You know, I, I didn't mind her. I thought, I thought she had some funny lines. In this, I think she's really good again, and she has some funny and good, good lines here. I love when they're in the truck traveling, and she asks this other guy, like, oh, what do you do? And he's like, um, he's like, we're not supposed to talk, basically. And she's like, Oh, so Boy Scout leader. Got it. I just thought that was a very good delivery of the line. And then they get to the base and she's talking to, you know, this general guy. And she's noticing that, like, special ops, the FBI, everyone <laughs> is basically there. Culminating together to try to figure out what this force field is and what is going on inside of it. And who's a part of it. Who's behind it. They're all trying to figure that out. I loved when she asked the guy, she asked the one guy, um, what data do you have so far? And he says, that's confidential. And she's like, oh, so nothing. Got it. She finds some CMBR, cosmic microwavable, cosmic microwave background radiation. She says the radiation is at a safe distance. And then she like adds for now, which is just the, you know, saying that this could expand Wanda's doings. Um, as we will find out later, Wanda is doing this. Right, you know what? If she's in control, we will see what happens. But I, she could expand this, I guess. That's what they're saying. There's a possibility of her expanding her little made-up world. So Darcy finds this weird frequency kind of going over everything. And it turns out it is the sitcom that we've been seeing. It's the show that Wanda has created. And they actually get a chance to see some scenes throughout this episode. They see scenes that we've seen. They're reacting to it as if, you know, they're the audience or if they're actually watching a sitcom. It's actually pretty entertaining at times. They're, it's, it can get very meta. I very much liked it. So they don't know if this is going to work, but they send the beekeeper suit guy that we see coming out of the sewer a couple episodes ago we see him getting ready to go into the sewer he goes in and uh they're not sure like i said if that's gonna work but they need to try something they don't know maybe it does go under the they don't know if the force field goes under the you know ground terrain and but they don't know that it doesn't they don't know if it does so they they're just trying they're exhausting all of their options in the control room, we when they're trying to get a signal to, you know, the TV show or to something in there, we get here we hear the laugh track and then Darcy has found the channel where, you know, the sitcom is airing and it's the first episode. Points out when they see Vision and Wanda, they're like, Oh my god, is that th yeah, that's th and she's like, Vision's dead though. Not blipped. He's dead dead. They don't understand, of course, what's going on. I mean, like the audience, you know, they don't understand why the sitcom was created why it's a sitcom at all you know they they don't have all the answers we don't have all the answers although this episode does give us enough i think something that i thought was coming up so they showed the scene when agnes came and you know gave them the pineapple for the upside down cake during the dinner with the hearts and i thought that someone was going to recognize agnes or you know like know that she's bad know that or maybe good i don't know but i think she's agatha like i said in my last one and uh, I thought someone might have recognized her or looked scared or looked 
confused or something but no one does at this time but I, I'm gonna get back to that in a minute so anyway we get a very meta line that I really enjoyed so you're saying the universe created a sitcom starring two Avengers I think it's just so meta because that's what we were wondering probably too the MCU Marvel the Marvel Cinematic Universe the universe created a sitcom starting to Avengers and and of course then Darcy's like that's a working theory for this show we have a lot of working theories and new theories developing theories and this show just you know this show just causes that it just causes you to think and notice everything and pick apart everything like I've said so it is a working theory we have a lot of working theories and you get more answers to that in this episode the guy asks are we recording this and and darcy's like never stopped and he says good i need immediate analysis on all of this and you got it i have my deep dives they start to pick through this show like we're picking through the show and they start to identify you know the different characters and they're real people that are playing the characters they identify the hearts norm phil herb you see agnes on the board at the end but they don't actually say anything about agnes or say her name which just obviously leads me even more to believe that she is definitely someone important in marvel and probably agatha harkness which it'll definitely be interesting because i definitely noticed right away i was like oh they didn't mention agnes but i i did pause it and i saw her on the board so some some writings that he wrote on the board were why the hexagonal shape why sitcoms is it the same time and space and is vision alive so that was some of the stuff that i noticed and those are of course some of the questions that we have as well and we want to know if vision's alive especially we want to know all of this but i definitely wanted to write that down just to get it out to you guys and see your theories so yeah again comment comment always comment down below with your theories for me so they see monica on the tv behind monica wanda and i i believe it's agnes talk are talking you know they just went shopping it looked like and monica's just sitting on the bench it looks like she's listening to them they're just talking i think it's from the 60s episode you know they're talking and um darcy is like oh i wonder if she has to you know put on an act and jimmy's like well for whom and like what would be the repercussions if she doesn't basically so darcy's like well it's a it's a 1950s sitcom it's a sitcom a 1950s sitcom jimmy's like but why but why and that's the question i mean we've all had from the beginning why is it a sitcom and i i know we'll find it out and i like i said i believe that this show is just gonna pay off i have a lot of faith in this series so darcy comes up with this plan to talk to wanda on the radio to try to communicate with wanda through this force field to try to communicate with her on the radio and of course we know what the scene is going to be so she does have this line though that i thought was you know pretty meta and you know making fun of some of the tropes of the sitcoms but she said um when she washes dishes there's a radio right beside her so we'll try then she usually washes dishes um about once an episode barf which is yeah like, like and, and and i thought that was funny and you know it definitely speaks to the times it was you know like i said last video it was more normal you know you just saw the woman doing the housework doing you know cleaning cooking doing the dishes doing everything around the house taking care of the kids while the husband went out and made the money that's what you saw so it, it was funny that darcy brought that up and made fun of that trope although they don't go anywhere with that like they don't try at the kitchen and i mean we don't see that in any of the other episodes of the show so but we do know when they do try is when she's talking to Dottie after the party painting committee or that 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 you know what i mean i'm thinking of the office for some reason i mean jim halbert he's in this episode i mean come on he plays jimmy woo i just I, that's amazing one of you know the agents comes up and shows them a picture of the helicopter of the show in the show they just saw the episode it just aired a couple minutes ago they see the drone the helicopter that they flew in and it's in color and he was like oh why'd you colorize it she's like i didn't so they don't understand that another mystery why is it colored why is the rest black and white we don't know that they are not sure of it but i know we will start to get answers here we've already started with these last couple episodes definitely definitely am enjoying the ride so far 
cannot wait to find out more about the drone, the colorization. Why is the sitcoms of the past being identified, you know, in this show? So then we get a scene that it kind of gave me chills because it's it's from the episode. So we obviously see it from Wanda's point of view, the radio scene. Who's doing this to you, Wanda? Wanda. And um, we see that. And now we see the other side of it with Jimmy Woo being the one on the other side making that call, which I know is a theory that went around. And I thought that too at a time, but it was Jimmy. So he is asking, what are you doing, Wanda? What are you doing? And um, while Darcy watches the screen, so Darcy is watching the screen and it kind of just cuts. So you don't see everything and Darcy's like, what the heck, what the heck? It didn't work, but it was a good plan on Darcy's part, of course. They're just trying to weigh all their options. And kind of a background thing, but they keep bringing in new TVs for the, you know, the different sitcom eras. I thought that was pretty cool. And it added, you know, it added to the look and the feel and the aesthetic because we're watching it on an old TV where we would be watching the 1950 shows and the 1960, 1970 shows while they were airing. I love when Darcy said, why does it keep switching time periods? It can't be just purely for my enjoyment. I was, I very much related to that because I've obviously been loving the switch of sitcoms, the switch of sitcom eras throughout this show and all of the, you know, hints in that. Like I said, every time something, you know, compromises is it, Wanda switches the era of the sitcom, the decade of the sitcom. So I really liked that line. It was relatable. It's what the audience is wondering and, and just so much, so much meta stuff that the audience is wondering, but also these task forces are wondering as well. So throughout the episode, like I said, there's a few parts of, you know, these characters, especially, especially, um, Darcy. I almost call her Max sometimes because she played Max in Two Broke Girls. So there's parts where like, she's like, they're watching it as if it's a normal sitcom we would watch any day. And so there's lines like with that and, and, um, Jimmy's watching it with her at this time. And he's like, oh, they had twins. And Darcy's like, you want any? She meant the chips, which is a, you know, just a, a gag, but, and he, he like takes it as, do you want any kids? But then he was like, oh no, chips. And, but I really liked those scenes cause it meta, meta, meta. I love meta stuff. I, I love it. I lo like 21 and 22 Jump Street. I love those movies. Uh, anything meta, I just think it's so funny and clever. Darcy's like, oh, twins, a twist. I thought that was a pretty clever scene, a pretty clever line. Then we get them watching the scene when uh, Monica mentions Ultron. And they're like, wait, did she just mention Ultron? Has that ever happened? You know, a reference to our reality, to our universe, which was cool because no, it hasn't. This is like the first big reference. The Ultron and the Petro scene, you know, is one of the biggest references to the MCU we've had so far before this episode, before this new episode. So it was, it was kind of another meta line. So it skips the part where Wanda would be pushing Monica out and they're trying to rewind it. They're trying to see that part and they can't. It just skips to the end credits. Wanda and Vision sitting on the couch with the babies watching TV as the credits roll. It just keeps skipping to it. They rewind it a couple times. They try to find it. They can't. So then we get to see what happened because we go into the TV basically and it's a continuation of the scene that we saw last week. Wanda is, you know, still wondering, what are you doing here? And she's just like, I'm just your neighbor. But how did you know about Ultron? You're not my neighbor and you're definitely not my friend. You are a stranger and an outsider. And right now you are trespassing here and I want you to leave. Just brilliant work again by Elizabeth Olsen. That's so scary. It's just a continuation of what we saw of her acting abilities last week and the, all the weeks prior and the movies prior. She is a terrific actress here. And she can be intimidating and scary when she needs to be. She can be nice and, you know, flirty and housewifey 50s when she needs to be. She's very versatile as an actress. I, I believe that. And a lot of these actors and actresses are. They portray these characters really well. Monica's scared, obviously. And, and all through these last lines, Wanda's doing her magic hand thing with the red um, you know, the red magic and she pushes Monica through the wall, through the fences, through the rooms and out the force field. And you see a cool side shot for a second of Monica going through each of this stuff. It's, it's, 
I thought it was very, you know, well directed and written. You know, the scene and this dialogue was just very well directed, written, and of course acted and shot on camera. Really good cinematography with this show. So Wanda, of course, uses her magic to fix the walls and all the stuff that she broke by pushing Monica out. That's when Vision comes in, like we saw last episode, Monica, um, Wanda's at the crib, looking at the babies, admiring them. You could tell she has some uh, scaredness, nervousness, you know, people are actually getting in. I don't want to, you know, uh, compromise my happy reality that I'm creating. This is a creepy part. It kind of, it didn't get me like jump scare, but it was, it was kind of scary. She turned around at the crib. So she turns around and Vision is um, basically like you see him when Thanos rips out the soul stone. His head's, his head's ripped. His eyes are blank. His, he's a little dark, um, he's different tone, you know, different skin tone. It's zombie-like looking, very creepy, eerie. It was, it was, a, it was a, you know, intense scene. The performance here, she's startled, of course, because it is an eerie scene. And she is taken out of her reality again because Vision's looking like how she remembers him and doesn't want to remember him. She's creating him in her vision creating him how she wants him alive obviously but for that second she saw him as this dead you know partner which is sad and tragic very well done scene so he's back to normal when she looks back up and he's like we don't have to stay here we can leave we can go wherever we want to she says no we can't this is our home he's like are you sure and this is a very good acted scene you know it's serious and she's like don't worry, dear. I have everything under control. So we get, you know, the confirmation. She's controlling this reality and him and everyone around it. And ooh, it's just, it's so, you know, beautifully, you know, tragic. So we go back out. Monica's laying on the ground like we see. And everyone's like, what's wrong? What's, what's going on? And she's like, it's Wanda. It's all Wanda. Really great, you know, line delivery on Tiana Paris's part. So then we get back to Vision and Wanda. They have their babies. They're sitting on the couch. She's like, what are you, what are we watching for TV tonight? Kind of trying to get back into that sitcom demeanor. And she, and then they just turn on the TV while well, looking, you know, at the TV camera kind of. So this scene, this ending scene is reminiscent of the ending scene of the first episode when they're on the couch and he has the remote. Very well done. You know, it bring it brings a lot full circle kind of. And of course, we're going to get more answers as this goes on. So then it gets please stand by like always and goes to the regular credits. Even though I, of course, as you know, love the sitcom stuff as well. I thought this episode was outstanding. Just outstanding. I believe that it's going to be a lot of people's favorite so far. You actually don't get much new material of Wanda and Vision, but at the same time, I didn't mind that for this because what we did get was just so compelling and important to and integral, integral to the plot and moving forward and the answers and the theories that we have. It was just so integral. So I, th I think I was okay with not getting as much Wanda and Vision, even though I love them and I think they're fantastic and they're one of the reasons you watch the show called WandaVision. But you get more of the other characters outside of the dome. And I think that that is just great. And I think it was definitely needed. Even though, like I said, obviously I loved the first three episodes. But I think that this episode was needed at this point. So I liked the ending shot. Uh, because, of you know, it's reminiscent of that shot at the end of the first episode. But at the same time, I kind of wish... Still keep that shot. They're on the couch talking, holding their babies, watching TV. But I think it should have glitched, you know, did the little glitch thing and started to like change to the next time period that they're going to cover, the next decade that this sitcom is going to cover. I think that that would have been a really good ending as well and set up for what the next decade is going to be. And I be believe next is the Halloween episode, which I'm so excited for. I love Halloween. And I think we're going to get more in that episode as well. I believe that's the episode probably when we get, I mean, we see the costumes when we get the... Agnes in the car scene when Vision, you know, snaps her out of whatever she trance she's in. So I'm very excited for Halloween episode. 
And I, I liked the ending, though, as it was. It was fine. It was, this was a great episode all around. I'm completely satisfied with it, and I think this episode is definitely what most were hoping for more when they first got into the show. With that said, though, I do not at all think that they should have, you know, reordered the events that I, as we see them. I don't think that, that would have worked as well. So much of this episode and these scenes are so superb, really, because of what we saw in the first three episodes. I don't think this episode would have worked as well if we didn't get the intrigue of the first three episodes of what's happening. I don't think that this one would have paid off as much. Yeah, we would have been intrigued still, but I think that I think the first three episodes were great the way they were, and this is the order that this show should have went. And I'm finally saying this. I think that I can recommend the apprehensive MCU fans that, you know, weren't sure or watched the first episode or two and didn't eh, about it or decided, you know, oh, I don't think I'm going to watch it. I think that you more apprehensive fans can get into this now. I think that these four episodes, especially three and four, give people enough to keep them interested in coming back each week. With that said, though, I still wish that they just release this all at once, or at least these four episodes, and then maybe like the, the next show of five, I guess. Or something like that. Something where we get more episodes. A bigger bulk of episodes. I think that that would have been, you know, it would have fit this show much more. And I think it would have kept more people interested because they could have just binge watched four episodes if they wanted to. Or all nine episodes if they wanted to. So those are my thoughts on this. And my deep dive, there wasn't as much sitcom stuff, which I think is the stuff that leads you to more, you know, theorizing and gives you more Easter eggs and clues. Like there was not a commercial in this one. There wasn't really any sitcom stuff for the most part. So I think that is what really gives you and gives me the fuel for these deep dives is I can just look at everything. And, and of course, there's still theorizing with this episode. I, I did get into some things, but I'm glad that we have more concrete answers and I'm looking forward to the rest of the show. Let me know what you think of WandaVision. Please, please, please comment down below. What did you think of my deep dive? What did you think of this episode? What have you thought of the episode so far? What are you looking forward to? What are your theories for the rest of this season? Let me know down in those comments. Blow up those comments. And of course, check out my other deep dives. Check out my other WandaVision content. And I just posted The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, my first time watching video. So check that one out. And of course, The Fellowship of the Ring, first time watching, if you have not checked that out already. If you liked all of that and you want to see more, of course there's stuff all over here and somewhere is my subscribe button, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Share my channel with your family and friends, like and comment on this video, hit that notification bell, subscribe, and come to the Upside Dan.